keep in mind my wife is always bringing home something that's in pieces and for whatever reason she thinks I can fix anything this used to be some kind of a decorative end table or something when she brought this to me it was in four pieces and I just I told her you should just throw this away and she didn't want to so I put the wood glue to it and put it all back together put some new dowels in and then put a tie strap around it and sucked it all up nice and tight and let it sit for about two days and it's pretty solid then she found this piece and wants me to fit that on the top and then I'll do a crackle glaze finish on all this and that's a planter stand which you know I get it and that the work and the engraving on this piece is really amazing I'm gonna try to save that as much as I can but anyway just to give you an idea of of the hell I live in every day but at the end of the day I think it's gonna look pretty cool so we're gonna try we're gonna do our best to see what we can come up with so it's been cloudy and rainy last two days therefore I moved everything inside I'm not complaining though temperatures are really nice <clears throat> this piece I think originally stood like this and because of these fresh uneven cuts on this I think somebody I think this table used to sit a lot taller somebody cut it in half for whatever reason and my wife wants that put on top like that and make a really ornate planter stand <coughs> excuse me but I think that I am going to think outside the box a little bit first and foremost I'm just going to show you something but you can't see it let me flip it over When you flip it over, it sits nice and solid as well, and it gives it a whole different look. Here's one of the exposed dowels. I'm either going to go over this with some wood putty or some air dry clay and close that in. That's glued pretty solid. There's dowels. Every bit of this was in pieces. I got it back together nice and sturdy. But now, when you put the planter stand, uh, plate on top of it it's going to sit like that which will be far more solid and I may put something ornate on top of each one of these legs so I think at the end of the day that's going to look more cool with a big clay pot with a fern in it or something that's going to be nice it's going to have to be cleaned up right here is going to have to be sanded back just a little bit on a couple of the edges to get it to cradle in where it rests all the way down here I just think it'll look better and be more solid so I'm not going to put you through the grilling process of watching me even in high speed doing all these steps I'm just going to explain to you what I'm doing and show you after the fact this is going to have to be cleaned wiped down real good lightly sanded to get rid of these stickers and then I'm going to start <clears throat> the process of the Elmer's glue and the white paint just have it a nice crackle finish and the top I'll do like I always do and paint it either black or dark brown and do the same process with it and that's what you're gonna have at the end of the day so I'll get back to you at the end of each step and show you what's going on I'm not sure how everybody else does this but me personally if I need to take just a little bit off in an area like this and here I'm just going to use a regular old standard hand grinder and just very gently work my way in and pull the, the medium out of this until I get it where I want it and then I'll go back over this and sand it and get it smooth again. It's just faster. You know me. I'm impatient. So we're going to do that right now. Well, I've got everything 
ground away. I dipped it down a little more and made this nice and flat on all four legs. And just to show you that people don't realize a lot of times what they have before they go and start destroying a piece. I'm almost certain this is walnut and possibly black walnut. It a uh, super hard, solid quality wood that you just have a hard time getting these days. And now, the piece sits in there nice and flat. It won't fall out when you put a plant in there. And on top of that, it is almost dead nut level. So that's good enough for a piece like this. While I am waiting, for the cleaner and stuff to dry. I wipe this down really good. It doesn't look like it, I'm sure. But I wipe this stuff down real good. And I noticed that one of these pieces was missing. So I found a piece of high quality marine grade plywood, the same thickness as this. Use this as a design, made a paper cutout for it transferred it over to the wood, cut this off with a jigsaw. Now I've got it glued and nailed in place. I'm gonna to have to let that set for 24 hours. And I don't wanna start any of the light sanding to get rid of some of these little stickers that were stuck on there or whatever. So the next time you see this, I will have sanded it and I'll be ready to start the Elmer's glue. And I may either use air dry clay or some wood putty and try to fill this in. We'll just see how that goes. Well, I just got home from work. It's 24 hours later. I wanted to show you something real quick. I normally won't go to this much trouble, but because this is made out of some really nice wood, it has these nice gussets put in. I noticed that we had one missing right here. So I found a piece of thick marine grade plywood that's the same thickness as that other piece of wood and though it's not quality, I painted it black after I cut it out to match the shape of the other ones and I took my Dremel tool and etched in the same design that's on the other pieces so that it would match. Maybe it'll show up a little bit when I put the paint on it. may not even matter. I just believe in going a little bit above and beyond sometimes to try to make a piece look really good. This is really exciting news. So you see how this is all powdered up, chalky looking? I just got through sanding it. This tells me this was a really old piece. It was covered with old school varnish. This is going to look amazing, guys. In order for you to get the best viewer experience from this, this is what I've decided I'm going to do. I'm going to take this piece of cardboard. I'm going to pull a bunch of glue onto this and use it to brush on. And I'm going to go from this edge over here to this edge over here. I'm going to cover everything in between minus this round piece that I'm gonna do after I flip it because I don't want the glue to dry faster than I can get to it with the paint. So my guess is that I can do this in sections and do this one. After that dries, I'll spin it and do this section, then this section, this section, then I'll flip it and cover what is left. I just think that's gonna be easier for you guys, easier for me and it'll give you the best viewer experience of what to do from this point on. Okay, we're gonna move pretty fast because it's a warm day. We're gonna start right here. I'm gonna coat this nice and heavy.
doesn't matter I don't think if the glue drips a little bit or whatever just like always we're going to get a nice heavy coat on this get it down in those cracks too this is not rocket science I know there's a lot of moving parts going on we're just trying to get optimal coverage doesn't have to be pretty because we're gonna do some cleanup at the end that I'll show you and this goes on pretty quick if you stay at it get it in these little flower petals every place you want paint to be the glue needs to be pretty heavy so I'm going to go back over the places I've already done I want to use every bit of this glue if possible just to make sure that everything's coated good I can feel it already it's trying to set up pretty quick we're going to let this set for just a couple of minutes and then we're going to go over it with the white. That's pretty much it. This is not rocket science and it really has a really nice effect when you get it on there and then put the paint right to it. And that's it. I'm going to put this in a cup of water, keep it wet, throw that to the side. I don't even care if it dries. If it does, I'll flip it over and use it. We're going to wait about two to five minutes and we're going to put the white on. I'll be right back with you. Okay, it's been three minutes since I put the glue on. I'm going to go ahead and get started. You're putting this on. Remember what I told you in a previous video. You try not to go more than two directions on this to make sure that you don't smear most of the glue off and that you get good paint coverage. That's what counts. And it doesn't have to be perfect, guys. You're going for a, an old, rustic, antique look anyway. Any runs, big deal. You can fix those. This makes for an amazing finish at the end. We want this to look like it's been sitting out in the weather for 10 years. Minimal. It's going to look amazing. I'm telling you, I can feel it. Any of these under pieces, you're going to be able to touch them up when you flip the piece anyway. I'm just trying to get all the coverage I can ahead of time. And that's it. We're going to let this thing sit for about 24 hours. Then we'll move on to the next piece. Okay, so it's 24 hours later. I've got this piece completely coated with white paint. It's crackling pretty good, but not as much probably as I'd hope. Doesn't matter. I'm going to work my magic on it and do some sanding. And we're going to move this out of the way for the moment. And we're going to get started with part B, which is this round tabletop or shelf top whatever you want to call it I don't even know where we got this to be honest with you I got a couple of holes in it we're gonna sand this down nice and smooth we're gonna do what I always do which is what paint it black then we're gonna cover it with Elmer's glue white paint hope that it crackles and hope that it adds a little magic to the rest of the piece I'll be right back with you well it's the next day. <clears throat> I let the uh, black paint dry on both sides. Really turned out nice and smooth. I sanded it first, of course. Now we're going to get started on the bottom portion of this first so that when it's dry, I can flip it and finish off with the top side. We're getting ready to put the Elmer's glue on here in case you haven't watched any of my previous videos you coat this real heavy with Elmer's glue 
and then you paint your white over the top of this and it crackles and gives it an aged look. So we're getting ready to get started with that next. Let's do this. It is a balmy afternoon here in northeastern Oklahoma and I'm not gonna lie, it's freaking hot out here. I'm getting ready to coat it with the good old Elmer's glue. And one of my trusty brushes that I've been keeping in the water, keeping them moist. So without further ado, let's do this. There is nothing about this that is rocket science. Just do the best you can. Try to get decent coverage on everything. Doesn't have to be pretty at all. All we're looking for is the end result, which is for it to crackle. I'm gonna try something different right now though, and I'm gonna go this way with the Elmer's glue, but I'm gonna go the opposite way when I paint it because I'm curious to see what it'll do. We're gonna let this sit for, I don't know, two to five minutes max. Then we're gonna get started with the white paint. Be right back with you. Okay, so it's been a couple of minutes. <clears throat> Gave me just enough time to go get a fresh nap, Daddy. And now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna brush our paint on this way but I'm going to edge it first. We're going to get right into the paint. Now that we got that rounded off, what have I told you before? We're going to go one direction and back. And we're going to go one direction and back. And we're going to go one direction and back. Continue this process. That doesn't mean we won't do a little bit of cleanup on the edges because there's always going to be more paint hits right here. Once we get this all coated, we're going to let it sit and totally dry. And then we're going to flip it and do the main side that everybody's going to see when they come into the antique store and they go, oh my god, that is the coolest looking planter base that I've ever seen. Okay guys, so it's been 24 hours and I let the bottom part dry overnight. It looks really good. Um, before I got on camera, I went ahead and coated the other side with Elmer's glue and put my paint on and I did a little experiment where I painted several different directions to see if that would give it a little bit of a difference in the crackling. I'm probably going to put my heat gun on it because I'm such an impatient guy. Um, it's hotter than the devil's toenails. In some ways that's good I guess. So we're getting ready to get this dry and um, I might actually have time to do the transfers that I have planned to surprise my wife with. So stay tuned for that. All right, I'll be right back with you. So real quick, the design that I think I'm going to put on the face of this, and understand this is eventually going to have a pot sitting on it. So I don't even know if it's, if it's truly worth doing, but I'm doing it anyway just because I think it's cool. Sometimes you just do stuff because you think it's cool. But my wife found this on Pixabay. That is the coolest picture of a cowgirl chick holding a glass of wine. And I'm gonna put that on there as a transfer. I find so many designs on there. They're 100% copyright free. For all you haters out there that are always hammering me saying I'm stealing somebody's copyrighted work, that's BS. So, I'm going to stick the heat gun on this. I'm going to try to dry this baby out. We're going to 
have some more fun with that polyacrylic transfer stuff that we dealt with in the last video. If you haven't seen that video, go watch it. Throw me some love. Anyway, I'll be back with you as soon as I get this lined out and see what it's going to do. So this is one of those times when you have like an aha moment or if you've had too much whiskey. <laughs> I'm getting ready to... Okay. I took this piece that my wife wanted it's a transfer she wanted on there and I burned around with my cigarette lighter and made a really weird shape but I did that for a reason because right here and right here if you lay it down just precariously there's two spots on this board that there used to be a screw in and I'm gonna miss both of those so this lays nice flat and uniform it's going to be crossways from the um, crackling finish and it is going to look bad as I promise you so now I'm getting ready to spread the acrylic poly acrylic that I use out on this whole entire surface I'm going to set this transfer and we're going to see what this looks like I'm flying by the seat of my pants, but I really feel like this is going to look good. Stick with me. Okay, we're going with this. This may be catastrophic or maybe the coolest thing I've ever done. Who knows? We're going to coat this really good. I'm going to go ahead and coat the entire surface just because I don't want to have to worry about the edges and the borders getting my picture the way I want it this stuff will dry and I can go back over with something different if I want and guess what if we mess up whoopie doo we'll paint over it and try something different but I'm flying by the seat of my pants and I'm trying something different and new and I, I kind of got a good feeling about it I want to make sure this time that I get a really good coat on everything because if you saw in my previous video some of my transfers didn't take quite as good as what I was hoping and I didn't I don't think I had quite enough medium on there we're going to go nice and heavy with this one it dries clear so it doesn't even matter once we get this to where you'll notice sometimes the dra the brush will drag a little bit. That means there's not much medium there. But when it gets to where it'll run nice and slick all the way across your piece, you know you've got a pretty good amount of the polyacrylic on there. Now we're going to take the transfer. Uh-huh. We're going to try to center up as best we can. We're going to pull it up. We're going to start working the bubbles out of it. Get it to lay in place. And like I've told you before, we're going to leave it and let the magic happen. This is up to God after this point. I don't see a single air bubble in any of this. So I, I think it took a good bite. And I do believe this is going to look fantastic when we're done. All right, guys, we're going to let that sit and dry. It's going to take 20, uh, a couple hours before it's set up enough to check it out. And you know what? I'm going to go around the edge of this and give it a shadow effect, and I'll show you how to do that too. But for now, I'm rubbing pretty hard right now because I want that transfer to stick. I want those grains 
that are underneath it to show through. And there you have it. We're going to see what happens. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Okay, so I put the heat gun to this and it looked like it was pretty dry to me. So I've already started. You see the mess I've got. I'm peeling the paper off a little bit at a time. But this looks, it's amazing. I am so excited about this. Now, I'm going to continue to add a little water. I want you to, I want you in on this. I'm rubbing, I'm getting all the paper residue off here. It's even showing the char lines where I burned it. it. It's fabulous. I can't tell you enough about this. It's flipping amazing. I'm going to continue this process of rubbing, trying to get all the paper off. Just know you have to go. It's a pretty long process of getting the paper off. And you go by feel. If, if paper keeps rolling up underneath your fingers, you've got to keep pushing it, pulling it, and get it off there. When I'm all done with this, I'm going to show you what the end product looks like. And this is going to be epic. Okay, guys, I got to tell you something. This has been a little bit of a journey for me. But you know what? This turned out to be fabulous. I am so excited about this piece right here. I'm going to flip the camera around and give you a little, a little tour of what took place on this project. I can't say enough about it. This, this is going to sell quick in the booth. So anyway, hang with me. So at the end of the day, I want you to feast your eyes on this. That turned out so amazing. I took a piece that my wife had brought home in four pieces. I glued it back together, went over it with um, Elmer's glue and white enamel, sanded it, Um, I actually made a piece. This piece right here is actually not the part of the original project, but I copied this, made this, got everything glued and nailed back together, and then put a transfer on the top that's nothing but a piece of copy paper with a photo that she picked out. And then I did a polyacrylic transfer on it. And look at the, the grains in this. That turned out so amazing. It's smooth. Oh my God, dude. This is gonna do really well in the booth and I'm gonna do polyacrylic from now on. This is so much further along than the Mod Podge. This is such a better product. Anyway, of course, I took a cigarette lighter and burned these edges to miss these two little holes right here. And um, anyway, I'm very pleased. I hope you got some good out of this. Let's move on to the next thing.